Hey coders, the money ready here. Today we're going to be looking at a fully fledged custom armor system. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I released a teaser the other day of Hypixel sugarcane armor in Minecraft. These are not my textures, but this is simply to show off the shader, which I did not code, which allows custom armor to be shown as you see over here. These are all the normal armors and yet this is also shown and um, the durability system. You'll notice if I'm in survival, explosion damage. These all produce durability as they would if they were normal armor, because they kind of are. So now we're gonna get into the two main parts of this data pack and resource pack. Let's jump right into that. The backbone of this system is Ancient King's Fancy Pants Texture Pack, which essentially what it does is it takes a leather armor with a specific tint, so in this case, I think that's all blue for that tint, and it matches it via a texture map right here. And if it matches that perfectly, then it'll override that leather armor texture. Just for that specific tint though, you can see there's still leather armor. And so because of this, you can have an insane range of different custom armors, and it's really hard for the player to encounter them. And if they want to, that's up to them, you know? And they also can have glowing textures, emissive textures, and they can be animated. So I'm going to give you a little overview of that and we'll move on to the other part of the pack. So Ancient King has a nice little tutorial GIF. I separated it into PNGs on my computer to reference, but I'm going to go to the most important part and that's in textures, models, armor, and you have the leather layer one and leather layer two. Let's go to Leather Layer 1. They're essentially the same thing. Leather Layer 1 just, it's more of the texture. It's not, it just doesn't have the leggings. So if we zoom in here, I ignored this part because I wanted to keep this for people who download this DP tools and so they can see how this is animation, this is emissivity. So you want to copy this area and move it over so you have the specific amount of empty pixels. And so you can keep on adding more and more and more to add more textures. They have to be the specific amount though of empty pixels there. And you go down to add animations. So in this case, if I go to color picker, you can see this is two, 255 just in the, in the blue. So if you gave yourself a leather chest plate that was completely blue, it would reference this texture. Now, because this goes down, this is the frames in the animation. So if I click on this pixel, you see it says four and 24. What does this mean? Well, the first number is the amount of frames. In here, there's four frames. You can't say like five or that'll mess it up. So four frames and 24. Well, essentially the default speed is 24 frames a second. So by having 24 there, it's dividing by that amount. So what you get is one frame a second. So just keep in mind, that's not the actual frames a second. So in this last pixel, this is the emissivity settings. So if it is one, it's going to go full emissivity. So essentially this is a texture map or emissivity map right here. This is the texture map. And it says, okay, white, go full bright, as bright as you can. Minecraft black, don't touch it. Just leave it the normal non emissive texture. But if this was larger than one in the R spectrum, then it would do partial emissivity where it says, okay, if it's gray, let's just do half emissivity. You might have back off. You don't need it fully. So you could have certain parts or you can have gradients. And then there's also another setting I forgot in the animation and that's B. What B essentially can do is it says if it phases between the animations. In this case, one would mean it would phase between the black to white for all the colors and zero just means it doesn't. So it's a harsh term. Now the interpolation I would like to add looks really good. So I would definitely check it out if you're trying to do an animated texture because it very smoothly blends between the colors. So that's about it for this texture. Ancient King made this amazing shader and Bell Voxel Raptor made the tutorial GIF. So check them out. 
And now we're on to the custom durability of the custom armor. Okay, here we are on the code. So I fairly recently did this, so I should remember it, right? So essentially you are checking for Karma 1B. So any custom armor needs to have the tag of C armor 1B. Then what I do is I check for every slot. And if you have it in that slot, then we're actually going to check that slot. So we only need to look at one of these. Now you are checking if it's been damaged. If it has, then you continue. Now this is the real meat of it and it's the entirety of it. Essentially what it's doing here is it takes how much durability the armor has in total. So it's like it's a thousand or a thousand two hundred and eighty and then it takes the current damage it currently has and it takes how much damage it just took. It adds the current damage and damage or it subtracts them and then it resets it with this lore attack. Now this lore will overwrite the last line of lore. So whenever you're giving yourself a custom armor item, it needs to have at least one line of lore. And if you want to have any other lore, you need to have like a one afterwards. Or in this case, if we grab this leather helmet and paste it here. So as yeah, sugar cane armor, speed 25, epic helmet. And at the end, I just have durability 800, 800. Now with this, it doesn't take the armor being hit to display the durability correctly. It automatically does it has the current, the max damage, and the karma. So whenever I get hit, this current damage will increment down and this lore will be affected by that. It's fairly simple, but it looks very clean and you rarely ever see a flicker of the durability bar. One last thing to add, this uses a custom loot table I believe I got it from Triashar's uh, loot font magic video. Essentially what it does is if it has drop contents when be on a shulker box, it'll burst like a chest instead of dropping like a shulker box. And that allows you to just move it over. You can also now use the item command. I could easily replace this, but I like the Lodian goodies. That's it for today, folks. Thank you for watching. This has been a very fun data pack to make, and I really hope it helps you all in your data pack development future. As always, keep coding.